Hey guys, today the very first global ancient summoning event is happening. It is only going to last through to Monday. And during this event, you'll be able to summon the Chaos Dominion heroes. If we go to the notice, you will be able to see exactly what heroes are being added in this particular announcement. And if we scroll down, you can see it is nine heroes all the way down to Aatrox here. In this video, we're going to talk about these nine heroes as a brief overview to give you an idea of how each of them is useful and, in my opinion, which ones are the best. So, Garn, Durza, Dasomi, etc. We're going to go through them one by one and we'll start with Garn, seeing as he is the legendary lord of the faction. Now, obviously, I'm recording this the night before they are released, so I don't have them on this server. So, here we are. This is the Forerunner server on my previous account. It is a separate server, it is not merged, so don't worry, I always get a comment saying, what is this about? It's an old test server, basically, that's still ongoing. And let's take a look. So there are a bunch of heroes here that haven't been added yet, but they will be slowly. And this is the Chaos Dominion faction as it stands on Forerunner right now. Of these heroes, the ones being added tomorrow are Garn, Vladov, Lugaru, Dasomi, Cerberus, Kaide, Sargak, Durza, and Aatrox. Those are the ones being added tomorrow. I've already updated my website, the tier list, to show the newly available heroes. They're no longer grayed out, these ones. So to start things off, we'll talk about the faction lord bonuses and then a quick overview of each hero just to give you an idea of how they function. So Garn is a defender, a legendary lord for the Chaos Dominion faction. It is this gentleman right here. As a legendary lord, he of course grants 15% stat bonus. And the main mechanics of this entire faction is built around these things right here. So the first one is increases faction allies damage based on their lost HP up to 60% bonus damage at 30% HP. So they gradually and incrementally increase in damage dealt by up to 60% when they drop down to 30% HP. And the second bonus unique to Garn is faction allies gain a 20% attack and defense bonus when health is below 30%. So that means if they're below 30% HP, they are gaining 60% damage bonus and 20% attack and defense. That's a huge bonus. Whereas Vladov, the epic lord for the Chaos faction, he has 10% stat bonuses as is normal for epic heroes, but he grants 40% damage at 30% HP instead of up to 60% for Garn. And that kind of explains why the faction is so suicidal. Unfortunately, they all really, really, really want to die. Some of them are very good at dying and some of them are incredibly dangerous when dead. So a strange one, a very strange faction, but pretty cool in some ways. And if you know how to use some of them, they can be ridiculously effective. So we'll start things off with Garn. He is the legendary defender. He is the legendary lord. I do have him on the Forerunner account, so I do have actually a pretty good amount of experience with him. Basic attack hits three enemies. He has an ultimate increasing his block and providing damage mitigation to himself and allies in range. He has a retaliate that deals pretty high damage in AoE, and he has some kind of, you know, almost invulnerability state once he drops below 30% HP. It's not invulnerability, it just reduces damage taken to 10 for 10 seconds. All of these things change on skill ups. I don't want to go too heavy, it will be a massive video. He does scale off of defense as damage. He is a defense scaling defender, and he increases defense when taking damage, and it caps at 30% bonus. So, what makes Garn so good? Well, I really like him. I've used him quite a bit on Forerunner. He's defense scaling, which means it's easy to make him very tanky while also making him actually deal relevant damage. He hits three enemies at a time, so he can actually deal some quite nice damage. He can block with his ultimate up, up to six enemies, seven with Olag's wall. He can retaliate as well, so if he is blocking six or seven enemies and they're all hitting him with his trigger chance up to 25%, he can actually massively splash out up to 400% AoE cleave and you can build him in three defense percent mains or one is even crit damage if you want and just go as much defense crit rate and crit damage as you can and he can actually really blast enemies out of the way I've seen him do some very good damage in arena he also has this state in sensibility which makes him pretty much unable to die for 10 seconds so yeah I like Garn I think he's pretty cool Honestly, though, I think his main usage from my time with him so far has been with Cerberus, who we'll go over later. So first, we'll go through the list in order because it's there. Vladov is next. I do also have him as well, as you saw. He attacks twice. He gains attack speed bonuses when taking damage. His ultimate uses some of his health up and costs him health per second, but he gains health back when he kills enemies. He also has the passive Laceration, which gives him a chance to deal AoE damage and actually apply bleed in AoE. So he's another epic hero that can bleed and another hero in general that can bleed. At the moment, we 
only have two, which is Salazar and Komodo. Vladov is another bleed option, which is really nice to have. I've used him a bit, not a lot, and I was not super impressed. His base attack is not very high for a fighter. It's not incredibly low by any means, but I just didn't find he did a great deal of damage. His ultimate really just reduces his health. If you look at it, it doesn't give him a lot more than that. He just loses health. So yeah, you're kind of relying on his Lord bonus, giving him bonus damage for being on low health, but unless you have a full chaos team it's kind of hard to build around people being on low health all the time you can't tell your healers to just let them kind of die but not really overall vladov is a pretty good fighter definitely worth building and it's nice that he's joint faction he is duo faction between chaos and nightmare so you can use him in nightmare teams if you want to use him in guild boss to get a bleed out that'll be really nice so i do think he's good next we have luguru luguru is pretty much the same but a legendary he's not a lord though duo faction again with nightmare he has a lethal strike. Every 12 seconds, he can consume 20% of his current HP to do a bonus damage. And if he's below 50% HP, that damage is increased by 60% to 240%. So he can nuke every 12 seconds at the expense of his own health. He is a two tile attacker, which I really, really like. Super good, very useful in Void Rift as well. His basic attack can apply bleed with a 15% chance. So that's obviously very nice. So we have another bleeder in the game. He's also duo faction with Nightmare, so you can definitely use him in guild boss as well. His ultimate reduces the cooldown of his talent, Lethal Strike, from 12 seconds down to just 5 as it reduces it by 7, though it will reduce it by more with skill ups as well. So it will go down to just a 3 second cooldown, which is really fast and will cost him a lot of HP. Also, his Lethal Strikes will ignore defense, which can be huge if the enemies are bleeding. So it's just a massive amount of nuke and costs him a lot of HP as always with this faction. Additionally, when he loses health, he gains attack speed. So it kind of scales. The lower his health, the more his attack speed. And finally, when he's deployed, he just loses 40% of his health because like I said, they like killing themselves. But he does gain attack permanently and he gains more attack over time. So he's just a burst hero that eviscerates his own health for the sake of gaining attack speed. And of course, if he has a Lord for the Chaos faction with him, he'll gain even more damage and more benefits from being on low HP. But overall, he's not a bad hero. He can apply bleed, which is great. His duo faction again, which is lovely. And he does have two tile range and does some good burst damage and can defense ignore, which is very valuable. Next up, we have Disomi. I do have Disomi as well, as you can see. I don't have Luguru, but I do have Disomi. And that means I can tell you quite confidently that he pretty much sucks and I hope you don't get him. So he is duo between Chaos and Esotericist. His talent has a mention of Magic Incense having a chance equal to half of his crit rate to apply twice the duration. So Magic Incense... How does it apply? It applies in his basic attack. He applies magic incense with a basic attack. And what it actually does is if he casts this on an ally who is over half health, they have their debuffs dispelled once every two seconds for six seconds. So basically three D spells on them, which is quite cool. Otherwise, if their health is below 50%, then they will be healed. So what that means is if you're not under 50% HP, Disomi is not going to heal you. He'll just be throwing out these debuff dispellers. And yeah, I'm not super fond of that because it means he can't really heal that reliably. People are just going to die. And there isn't that much content that requires debuff dispelling. In fact, the only content that I can think of that really matters is the first phase of Hard or Nightmare of the Void Rift. And even there, I would probably prefer to use Midan because her ultimate will instantly purge every one of their debuffs. It's more reliable and she's only an epic. So I currently don't see much use for Disomi. There might be something I'm missing that's obvious, but I don't like it. His ultimate heals two more allies and increases their defense. So that's built to be used with Garn for a de defense bonus. His passive grants a shield to an ally when they drop below a certain health. It's a very nice shield. The cooldown is not crazy at 30 seconds with max skill ups. So it's actually pretty good. It's like 100% shield every 30 seconds. I think that's quite good, but it's not enough. And his final passive just gives him some attack, basically, which I think is kind of boring. So I don't really like Disomi that much. Finally, we have Cerberus. I have this guy. I think he's actually really, really good. He is duo faction between Cultist and Chaos. His talent is that he summons Water of Decay at the location of the enemy with the highest HP at the cost of 20% of his max HP every 14 seconds. So every 14 seconds he'll apply Water of Decay and it inflicts a bunch of damage every second for six seconds. Whenever he takes damage, the cooldown is reduced. This hero cannot be healed. He cannot be revived. 
and each time he dies, his revival time goes up by 30 seconds. Just so you know, his 60 second revival time here is a lie, because this 30 second extension counts on his first death as well. So the first time he dies, he goes on a 90 second revival timer, which is kind of a lot. So I don't like that a lot. You do tend to want to use him with an A1 Volker if you're using him in Gear Raid 1, because otherwise he's just out forever. So besides that, so he's applying these debuffs, he can't be healed, he can't be revived, and when he dies he stays out for a long time. His basic attack, well it's not a basic attack. He just immediately deals a 200% AoE when you place him, and after that he creates these Water of Decay puddles underneath him, underneath enemies nearby, and they deal 40% damage per second. It says permanently, it's not permanently, it's while he's alive. He has an ultimate that just increases his damage down by 70 to 100% and additionally heal slow enemies that he hits with his AoE damage. So it's basically just 100% damage increase and some slow. He has his first passive and this is really Water of Decay, this passive here. This is the majority of his damage. This is what makes Cerberus so insane. Upon death he generates an AoE effect dealing 100% AoE damage per second for 12 seconds. At max skill ups this goes up to 20 seconds and 140% AoE damage. He has another one which reduces his deployment cost the first time you place him by 6 so it won't cost him 17 to place the first time it will cost him only 11 and when he dies the first time it reduces the cost of deploying mages and that can be why one for your whole team or two for your whole team with max skill up so there's some kind of weird niche there but it's kind of useful i guess anyway the reason he's so insane is this effect here water of decay is 20 seconds of 140 percent damage per second to everything in aoe it's just kind of ridiculous i don't know if this is actually damage capped on the number of enemies it hits it feels like it's not just because of how insane it is but maybe it is it's just this is probably the highest damage I see in the game in terms of consistent massive AoE damage. It just melts Gear Raid 1. It's how I cleared stage 20 on Forerunner server was relying on Cerberus because this Water of Decay death effect just absolutely eviscerates. The trick to using him, and maybe I'll do a spotlight video on him in future, but the trick to using him is that this death effect is based on his stats at the point of death. So if you are fortunate enough to have Vladov or Garn, then the 60% damage bonus and 20% attack from Garn will be applied to Cerberus at the point of his death because he will have 0% HP. So he'll be gaining 60% damage and 20% attack bonus onto this. Now, additionally, if you make sure he dies with his ultimate up, that's another 100% damage increase. If you make sure he dies while also under the effect of Dolores, then you just have a nuke that eviscerates the entire board. It's a massive ground pool that just crushes everything in range i've seen mine doing like 350,000 damage per tick or something without power of dominance and just completely crushing everything it's just insane so yeah cerberus when you and that was a really specific example i gave right having a lord using dolores having his ult up when he dies it is actually not a very short time to get his ultimate up especially because he can't be healed and he's just killing himself so it can be a bit tricky to time all this but if you can get the timing right and you get him in good gear, Cerberus will just delete waves like nobody's business. He is a really interesting hero to use. Anyway, I've gushed about Cerberus enough, so we'll move on to Cade. Cade, I've tested briefly on the test server, and I know some people have pulled him, and I've not heard many good things. I don't want to get into his skills too much, because they are kind of weird and confusing. He can apply winged blessings when one of his summons disappears with a 20% chance. His basic attack just summons his wind beak to deal damage that bounces and when that despawns there's a 20% chance for it to give 20% attack speed to him I believe. His ultimate marks an enemy making them vulnerable to damage taken, magic damage taken and all allies will prioritize attacking that one target. Also Cade will lose 10% of his HP per second and if the enemy dies it will summon a storm beak for 16 seconds. And you can see that the Stormbeak does 250% damage with each attack and it stuns for half a second as well. So it looks very strong. Again, if it despawns, the 20% chance that it enhances Kaid's attacks into Storm attacks for 15 seconds, whatever that means. He has a passive that when an ally dies or retreats, so die or they're despawned by you, all allies gain 50 attack speed. Which is, again, kind of weird and niche, but it works very well with Cerberus and especially Aatrox, who we'll get into later. And finally, if he dies, he'll deal massive amounts of single target rapid damage to one enemy. So dies or retreats. It's kind of weird, but it is actually quite a bit of damage, so you might find a place where that's quite good. It, I tested it in Artifact Material Raid, and it was like nearly 30% of the Stage 18's health. So it's, it's, it's a good burst of damage, but it's so niche. 
Moving on, we have Sargak. I actually quite like Sargak. I've been testing him on the test server a bit. I've been using him in a piercer team on Gear Raid 3, and I find him to be very good. He is another bleed hero. He has a 10% chance when attacking to throw a blood spear, which just straight up bleeds the enemy target. And if the target is already bleeding, then it ignores 50% of their defense. So this guy, with a quite a fast attack interval of only 2 seconds, has a 10% chance to bleed the target, and if the target is already bleeding when he procs this 10% blood spear, then it will ignore 50% of the target's defense. That's quite good. Basic attack prioritizes airborne, 100% damage, very standard. His ultimate reduces 10% of his HP per second, because again, these guys love killing themselves. It also reduces his defense by 30%, but it does increase his attack by 20 to 30%. And additionally, every basic attack hits twice, so you have more chance of procking blood spears and thus more chance of ignoring half of the enemy's defense. His first passive increases attack speed based on health lost, and he does have specialized attack speed, which seems to scale on him. So it's not a linear change, he scales with more bonus attack speed depending on how low his health is. And finally, he has feral force, which increases his damage when on low HP, and again, if the enemy is already bleeding, then his blood spear will immobilize the enemies. So overall, he throws spears, he throws spear fast, spear bleed, if spear already bleed, he ignore defense. That's kind of it, and he also likes to kill himself on the side. But he's pretty good. A lot of good damage, very fast attack, and a playing bleed, and some defense ignore. It's very nice overall. So next up, we have Durza. He is a mage. Again, duo faction, chaos, and cultist. Basic attack applies a slow, 50% for 2 seconds, and when he attacks enemies who are slowed, I guess he can do that himself, so it's very easy, he will gain 70 attack speed for 3 seconds. His base attack interval is 2.8, so he should be able to maintain that by himself without even any attack speed in his build. Basic attack doesn't even tell us how much damage it does, but we can assume it's probably 100% since it's single target. His ultimate is really fun. He just takes 40% of all of your allies' health away, because that's great. He's built for his faction, really. Hard to use outside of his faction. And he starts a ritual for 10 seconds. And then at the end of the ritual, he just keeps deducting more of their HP. 20% every 2 seconds. But he does grant them 50 attack speed. So whoopee, that's some attack speed. But the main purpose of this ultimate is his passives. During his ultimate, Sanguine Right, when an ally in range receives damage, there is a 20% chance to deal 90% AoE damage to nearby enemies around that ally, and to apply 20% vulnerability to both magic and physical damage. So it's actually dealing pretty good AoE damage. The trigger can be up to 30%. It can be up to 120% AoE damage, and it's applying a really good vulnerability debuffs. So I think that's pretty good. But the final passive, Cursed Infusion. If an ally's HP drops below 30% during the HP reduction of Sanguine Rite, they will gain damage increase and that goes from 30 to 50 percent and one thing i'm unsure about with this damage increase is it doesn't have a duration i haven't tested this yet on the test server in editing i'll go and test this and leave a note somewhere if it's permanent or if it is a duration and yeah that seems pretty good to me it's obviously kind of hard to replicate and to force it to happen but if you can 30 to 50 percent damage is quite big and if it is permanent that's kind of insane and if it's not then i guess it's kind of just a bit eh but yeah he is part of the cultist faction as well, and he does apply reliable slows, very reliable single target slows. So he'll be good at proccing their lord bonuses. And finally, we have an epic hero there. Finally, adding more epic heroes. Not many, don't expect much more, unfortunately. But we have Aatrox. I actually really do like Aatrox. I think he's pretty cool. So before we get started on what he can do in his kit, look at his numbers down here. He's a fighter, but he only has one block. But he only has a cost of 7 to deploy, and his revival time is 20. So his revival time is nearly rivaling Decimus, the rare, and you'll notice they are actually basically the same model. Well, 20 second revival time is cool, plus he's very cheap at 7, so I really like using Aatrox for this. He's Chaos and Cultist, a duo faction hero. And let's talk about what he does. So his talent, he cannot be healed by allies similar to Cerberus, and his revival time is greatly reduced as we saw. And whenever he is revived, it will increase the revival time by 6 seconds and he's damaged by 5% which will stack up to 3 times to 15% damage increase and 18 seconds longer revival time. So his revive time does go up with every death but even at max stacks it's still going to be a lot lower than a normal hero's revive time. So what does he do? Basic attack is just one enemy he hits for 100% damage, very standard. His ultimate is a passive but it happens as soon as he's deployed. He loses 1% HP per second and he deals 70% AoE damage around him per second. So it's up to 90% AoE damage a second passively. That's pretty cool. It's 90% damage a second in AoE. That's never a bad thing. And his passive lethal bone fire. 
when he dies he leaves a 70 again up to 90 percent aoe damage per second ground for 10 seconds he's like a light version of cerberus he does have a much lower much much lower respawn time than cerberus but he does do significantly less damage than cerberus does so yes aatrox is not going to be pushing out crazy damage I like him in Gear Raid 2 because he's a very cheap block that comes up quite fast. So I do like him for his respawn time. But honestly, I've used him in Gear Raid 1 in pretty good gear, to be fair. And he was actually very good. So I do rate Aatrox. He actually can do some pretty good damage. But he's just a bit weird to build around. His first awakening drops his revival time. His third re reduces his cost. And his fifth increases the damage from his death effect. So overall, I think Aatrox is pretty good. Anyway, that's it for the video. I just wanted to go over all of the Chaos heroes that are coming in this version. I won't talk about the ones that are yet to be introduced because the video is already quite long. Overall, as you can see, there is a theme. They like to be on low HP and two of them like to actually be dead. So it's a very strange faction. They are built to be used in arena predominantly. One thing I didn't mention is they all have some kind of special arena passive. So for almost all of them, it is reduced cost in arena. And that seems to scale from five all the way down to like two. So two cost for Aatrox, two cost for Cerberus as well. But then if you look at Lugaru, he has 15% damage bonus. He doesn't have cost reduction. If you look at Sargak, he also has 15% damage increase. So of the ones being added, both Lugaru and Sargak deal 15% bonus damage in Arena as a special passive. And all of the rest of them have a scaling amount of cost reduction in Arena. So they're supposed to be an Arena faction, but personally, I don't really see it. I have actually used Garn and Cerberus together in my sustained DPS Arena team, just because you put... Cerberus out front you ult with him and he dies and he has the Lord bonus from Garn and then he kills like an entire wave instantly and you win the round super fast. So I do like that combo but aside from that I, I really think you would need to have Lugaru plus one of these two Lords to build the core of the faction. Uh, I do think some of them are very good outside of the faction though. Lugaru obviously should be good. I think Vladov should be good as well. They're both bleeders. Sargak is another bleeder, so he should be great outside of the faction and does do good damage and is a piercer duo faction, so very good in the piercer team. And Cerberus is great as well as Aatrox outside of the faction. Dasomi is atrocious outside of the faction. Cade, I'm not entirely sure. Same with Durza, but I suspect they're not great outside of the faction. And Garn is a pretty good defender, but yeah, he's a bit fiddly to use. He can do pretty good damage, probably the best damage from the defenders other than maybe Reeve. But Reeve would not be anywhere near as tanky as Garn if you were building him to do damage. You can build Garn to do damage and be tanky. Anyway, that's it for the video. I hope it was interesting for you. I wish you the best of luck with your summons and have a great one. Take care, guys, and bye-bye.